Hey guys, Frank here. Um, today we're going to cover um, the battery out of the lawnmower and how we're going to modify that to suit the needs of being able to do uh, my lawn mowing with 18650s instead of lead acid. And the first thing we're going to do is tear into this box here and uh, take a look at what we have to work with. So stay tuned. Hey guys, this is uh, Frank, DIY engineer, and this channel is all about DIY stuff. And lately we've been just working on a lot of battery projects, and this is another one where I actually have a uh, 36 volt lawnmower that I purchased that uh, we'll be looking into this battery to see if we can't rebuild it using lithium ion cells. So let's jump into this. Okay, in the last video you saw how I, I mowed the lawn and how uh, the lead acid did. It did most of my lawn and and by the end though these lead acid batteries were just toast. So what I've done is I've opened this up into uh, be able to see inside of it and what we have in here I'll disconnect some wires here it's kind of hung up. All right, Here we go. So if you can see here this is interesting because what they did is the connector is just using an Anderson connector and the charging units are also little Andersons. So that's kind of a stock deal. And these just plugged right into the battery. There was no circuitry that I could find. These just come right straight out of these Andersons right into the lead acid. So in looking in here, what I have is three 12 volt, 12 amp hour batteries. And this is the case, an empty case. So with that, we're going to actually set these aside. We know that we're look, working with 12 amp hours in this set, and it needs to be 36 volts. So we're going to see if we can't de design a battery for this. At first glance, um, this case here has a, they, it edged out for those cells to fit in there. And so the first thing I need to do is take some of my, uh, I need to figure out how many cells I can actually get in here. And this is a five by, and then these are singles that I have strung together in these strings. And so in looking at this, you know, there's, there's a couple different configurations or in looking at it, uh, I could probably, you know, I could probably get, let me put two of these together. This way here is too big, it's hitting on the edges. And yeah, I could probably mod this case, but I don't want to do that too much. Across here, I can go quite a few. Let's just throw a couple more on and see see if I can go over. So that would be 10, that'd be 12. 12 would fit, but it's tight. So we could probably do an 11. Pull these singles off and go. We know, we know based on the uh, the configuration of going to a 36 volt battery, we're going to need a 10S. And it has to be a 10S to be able to do what we want it to do. Okay, so that works out fine with 11. Is that right? Uh, no, that's 9. Uh, is that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's 9. I wonder if, if I were to turn this... Uh, and I'll probably fast forward through a lot of this. You guys don't have to watch it, but to me it's kind of fascinating to be able to do this engineering part because we're going to figure out how we can get a 10S into this box. So if I do 5 by 5, that should give me a 10, which is what I have. So this is a 10, and that is just too tight. So I need a 9. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So a five by four. Uh, one, two, three, four. This just I'm doing this just to get measurements to see how it'll fit. Yep, a nine will fit just right. It has a little bit of float in it, and that's fine. So I can go nine across, which leaves one extra cell pack. And because of the length, uh, you know what? Let's see if I can go four and four. That will give me, let's 
So four and four is n just not quite enough, so that's eight. So I would need to go four and three. So just for giggles, let's just play this out here and see if we can't get that. One, two, three. So we'll take this off here. Oh, broke it. So there's my three. So that'll give me three, four, five, six, seven. I don't think I can get another one in there. No, H too tight. So seven. So seven by nine. So it leaves one row extra. So if I take another, which I'm out of my little things here. Let me see if I can do a, a seven across. Is it seven? Yeah, seven by nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the whole thing. So this, my hope is, is that it'll fit in here. And it looks like we're gonna be, that should be fine if I go, yep, that'll be fine just like that. So to get that, I'm gonna have to do a seven by nine. Let me pull the battery up and I'll show you what I did. But that's the design. It's, a, it's, it's gonna be a, a 10S. And it's a 36 volt. Where did I do with that? All right, so this is the end product of building out the battery for this. And you can see here what I did. These are all singles. So we're running, um, so two, four, six, eight, nine, nine across. And then my 10th row is up here on top. So we have nine by 10. And I'll show you this design and why I use these wires. Um, when I go back inside, we'll do some computer work, and I'll show you how I actually did the engineering pieces on this. So looking at this, what I have here is my BMS is on top and my BMS leads all tied together. And I've already soldered all my bus bars in, and I know I didn't resell this whole kit, but I looked at all the cells and they're all, the skins were all good, and so I didn't, I just thought, I'm gonna bury this thing in this box and so it doesn't really matter. So the first part of it is gonna be um, just making sure this fits and I haven't actually stuck it in here yet. Okay, we got some room to spare. And so I'll need to um, probably pad this a little bit and get it to fit a little bit better. But it's definitely a lot smaller than these. Weight-wise, and weighing these out, these batteries here in the case weighs right up 35 pounds. This here battery pack here weighs seven. So it's quite a bit of weight difference between the two. And this fits in pretty nice. So I, I'm really liking that. And I'll probably use some foam or something in there. I don't want to go double um, height because I don't have quite enough room. But I am going to stick some electronics up here in the top. I'm going to mount them into the lid up in here so I'll be able to have a display of how this battery is doing as I'm using it. I'm even toying with the thought of, because this is, let's see here, yeah, this is the front. What I may do on the front out here is find some way to actually mount headlights. I'm thinking about headlights as well so I can mow at night. I usually mow at night because in the summertime when the lawn's growing fast and green it is just too hot to mow during the day so i mow at night if i have headlights on my mower then all the more power to me all right so that is the basic design of the battery and i will walk you through um, the documentation that i put together on this this is uh, the new design it fits in here rather nice and it's a lot easier to carry than these monsters so let's go inside and uh, walk through some of the documentation I put together on building out uh, this specific cell pack so you can uh, can see that. I would have showed you guys the soldering, but you know what? You guys have seen tons of soldering, and I don't know that you need to see that. And if you want to look at how to mount a BMS, then we can do a video on that as well. But uh, I just put this one together real quick. It actually went a lot faster with my new soldering gun. I just love it. It is so much better than uh, the stuff I have been using in the past. So let's go inside and 
cover the uh, the details on this this battery pack itself. All right, guys, really quick. This, is, in a nutshell, is a breakdown of the design that I did for that battery pack that we're going to use for the lawnmower. What we're looking at here is a 7P10S. So got two, four, six, seven, seven deep, and each of these cell sets are there. So there's 7P, and we have 10S. So there's nine across the bottom, and then this extra one up on top makes 10. Um, this view is showing from the bottom, and this is from the top. So if I'm flipping it, it's just bringing this edge here towards you, and it would give you the other side of the cells. So you can kind of see how the flow works. I told you about the white wires on there that I would explain those later. So basically, I use the white wires, just represented here by this one arrow, in connecting this, this bus bar and this bus bar together to make them one so that it just, it's essentially, if I were to have this cell set sitting on this side, it would do the same thing. I just have to do it with two bus bars because it is separated. So that's what the white wires are, is to tie those together to basically make those two bus bars one bus bar. Uh, to kind of give you an idea of the flow, what I did is I represented this on the bottom just for this section of the cell pack. The gold bars here are these, uh, the copper wires for my bus bars. And you can see the flow just basically goes right through each of the cells all the way to the end. And then I would have another bus bar here, which would reach out to the other bus bar and complete the 10, uh, the 10S configuration. So that is a breakdown of the cell pack itself and how it was, I was going to need to build it which I've already built, you've already seen it. But this was a drawing that I did so that I knew I could actually visualize how the flow would go. All right guys, here is my master harvest log. Um, if you'd like to get a copy of this, you can find one in the description below. What I have done is I've been harvesting since, uh, looks like October 2016, so I have quite a few cells. In this lawnmower battery, I'm actually gonna use this number one cell. So all the ones here are marked in red I went through, I, what I did is I, I put together all my cells and kind of put them in numeric order, trying to find all the cells that I had just floating around that were not part of my Powerwall cell set. I ended up using probably 20 or so, 20 or 30 um, from my Powerwall into this, which is fine because I had some extras that I wasn't going to use. So I needed 70 cells total to build this lawnmower battery. So it was quite a few. Anyways, I marked them, and then what I did is I just copied those cell information over here so I had the cell IDs here in column A and that that's one of the things I was interested in the other thing was the milliamp hours over here on this uh, column Q and after I had the data in here what I did is I grabbed all the uh, milliamp hours from column Q and then I went over to repacker and I put them in here and then I put in my cell sizes and it gave me back uh, calculations for my cells. So if I go back over here to the lawnmower set and I go all the way to the bottom, what I have here is my 10, uh, my 10S, and these are all the cells. So there's seven in a, a grouping. And so what I was interested in here is one, this is how the groupings go. So each cell set has these specific cells in them. And I found them by using the cell IDs. So I took the calculations because I wanted to find what was my average size of my cell. Out of all 70 cells, what is the average across the board? And it came up with this 2132. And that means something. I need that number. So I need to know how many cells total, how many cells are in each battery set. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you the calculator, which is another tool that I built that allows you to go in and put together um, basically a configuration to see how much juice you actually have. So I'm going to start with the reference data over here on the second tab, the reference data. But what I was interested in was this size, this 2132. That is the size that I got from that other spreadsheet. So I, based on what I got out of uh, Repacker. So that is significant. I go back over here to the actual cell calculator and I moved this first setting to 36 volt, 
because that's what I need. And remember, we had assigned it with seven uh, cells in, in a row. So the total number of cells that I need is seven for each parallel cell pack. And I'm going to have 10 of those packs in a row to generate a single battery. So the battery will be completed based on these numbers. Now what's neat about this is I can go down here and look at what I have in there. So this is actually going to produce a 15 amp hour battery is what I'm going to get out of this cell set running at 36 volts. Now the significance to that is the batteries I just took out were lead acid and they were only a 12 amp hour. So it's going to be significantly more power than what was originally in it when it was brand new and those batteries were used and so they probably didn't have a full 12 amp hours left in them because that's one thing about lead acid is you can't you really can't drain them all the way either but with these I know what the capacity is and I can drain them when these are dead they each cell is at 4 volts and the difference between 4 volts and 3 volts is so many milliamps and so if I drain all those milliamps out of each cell I'm gonna get 15 amp hours out of this battery. Pretty cool. I'm actually pretty excited about that. So total cost, you know, I'm around a buck, buck ten to sell. So the battery is going to cost me at seventy dollars. It's not cheap, but it's cheaper than buying a new battery. Because if you go out to uh, even to Amazon or wherever and look at the cost of a replacement battery, I think they're pretty significant. I haven't looked at it, but the ones that I've seen have been pretty spendy. So I think I'm actually getting a good deal here. I'm going to be into lithium ion and I'm going to be with a bigger capacity. So that's kind of how this sheet really plays into uh, the whole process as well as my harvesting and the repacker. Hey, I hope this is helpful to you. Um, it's kind of a fun project to be able to take an old lawnmower that's uh, possibly worn out or worn down and replace the battery set on it and be able to uh, revitalize it, reutilize it, and see how it, uh, it performs. I'm really anxious in the next video to actually mow the lawn again and see how it performs with uh, the new lithium ion and see if it outdoes the, uh, the lead acid. I don't know. I'm hopeful it does. Everybody, you know, from what I've read and seen, it should. So let's, we'll see. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe and ding the bell. Ding the bell so you get notifications whenever I post new, uh, new postings. And uh, I'll leave a comment if you have questions or if there's something you'd like to see that I'm not currently doing that you'd like to see done. I know that there's been a few of you that have requested I do an EV and that is something that is slated for to be done here probably to get started on in the next six months or so. We're going to start building out an EV. I also have my power wall that I got to get built. So there's quite a few projects to get going on and uh, I'm very eager to video all of it so you guys can see the progress on that. And I know this lawnmower thing kind of came up but it's spring here and I wanted a new lawnmower so I bought a used one and we're gonna refurbish it so thanks again for watching and we'll catch you next time